morning students our next chapter is permutations and combinations it's a one very important chapter for all type of competitive exams also before going to discuss the chapter we need to study some basics that will helpful to solve problems related to permutations and combinations first thing you need to study here is factorial notations consider first n natural numbers that is 1 2 3 up to n there are infinitely many natural numbers are there you are considering only first n natural numbers that means it starts from 1 up to n we don't know the value of n like first 100 numbers first 200 numbers or first 1000 numbers but you are considering only finite number of first natural numbers okay then take the product 1 into 2 into 3 into dash 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 up to n or multiplying n natural numbers then this product is denoted by n factorial therefore meaning of n factorial is product of first n natural numbers okay there's a meaning of n factorial clear n factorial means that is 1 into 2 into 3 into up to n okay if you take the product we called it as n factorial another symbol is there you can write it as like this also it's not angle n it's a symbol for factorial notation you can write it as n factorial or you can use this symbol also clear so by this definition consider some examples suppose i am writing 5 factorial what's the meaning of 5 factorial then n factorial means product of first n natural numbers then 5 factorial means product of first 5 natural numbers that is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 it's equal to it's a same actually while writing factorial notation you are using descending order that is you can write it as 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 okay it's equal to 5 for the 20 23 the 60 62 the it's equal to 120 so 5 factorial value is equal to 120 then what's the value of 3 factorial meaning of 3 factorial is product of first three natural numbers so you can write it as 3 into 2 into 1 it's the same as 1 into 2 into 3 3 2 a 6 1 a it's equal to 6 so 3 factorial value is equal to 6 similarly you can write it as 2 factorial value 2 factorial value is equal to 2 into 1 product of first two natural numbers is equal to 2 and take one factorial one factorial value it's equal to product of first one natural number that is one only and very importantly zero factorial okay remember by mathematical notation zero factorial value is equal to one so zero factorial does not implies product of first zero natural numbers zero factorial is a mathematical convention zero factorial value is equal to 1 okay. now see i'm considering 4 factorial 4 factorial can be written as 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 now consider this much part 3 into 2 into 1 so 4 factorial can be written as 4 into what's the value of 3 into 2 into 1 3 into 2 into 1 is nothing but 3 factorial So four factorial can be written as four into three factorial. Similarly, see four factorial can be written as four into three into two into one is there. How to write two into one? You can write it as two factorial. Again, see four factorial can be written as four into three into two into one factorial. Then see value remains the same, right? Or take six factorial. you can write 6 factorial as 6 into 5 factorial right why 6 factorial value is equal to product of first 6 natural numbers that is 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 then see here i am writing 6 factorial as 6 into 5 factorial now consider that one see 6 factorial is equal to 6 into what is 5 factorial 
फाइव फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट फाइव इंटू फोर इंटू थ्री इंटू टू इंटू वन बै दिस यू कैन से दैट सिक्स फैक्टोरियल कैन बी रिटर्न एज सिक्स इंटू फाइव फैक्टोरियल और यू कैन रईट इट एज सिक्स फैक्टोरियल इक्वल टू सिक्स इंटू फाइव इंटू रिमेनिंग टर्म्स फोर फैक्टोरियल और यू कैन रईट इट एज सिक्स इंटू फाइव इंटू फोर रिमेनिंग टर्म्स थ्री फैक्टोरियल सो इन जनरल इफ यू कंसिडर दि एन फैक्टोरियल एन फैक्टोरियल कैन बी रिटर्न एज एन इंटू एन माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल लाइक सी इफ यू टेक इन सिक्स फैक्टोरियल हाउ कैन यू रईट दिस वन यू कैन रईट इट एज सिक्स इंटू फाइव फैक्टोरियल फाइव फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट सिक्स माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल राइट देन सी एन फैक्टोरियल कैन बी रिटर्न एज एन इंटू एन माइनस वन इंटू एन माइनस टू फैक्टोरियल ओके दट इज सी सिक्स फैक्टोरियल इज दे यू कैन रईट इट एज सिक्स इंटू सिक्स माइनस वन इंटू सिक्स माइनस टू फैक्टोरियल वॉट यू गेट सिक्स फैक्टोरियल इक्वल टू सिक्स इंटू सिक्स माइनस वन इज फाइव इंटू सिक्स माइनस टू इज फोर फैक्टोरियल इफ यू एक्सपांड दिस वन वॉट यूल गेट सिक्स इंटू फाइव इंटू फोर फैक्टोरियल वैल इज इक्वल टू फोर इंटू थ्री इंटू टू इंटू वन दट इज नथिंग बट एक्सपैंशन ऑफ सिक्स फैक्टोरियल सो इन फैक्टोरियल नोटेशन यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दीज थ्री फॉर्मुलाज फर्स्ट वन इज एन फैक्टोरियल इज नथिंग बट एन इंटू एन माइनस वन इंटू एन माइनस टू इंटू अप टू वे अप टू डैश डे डैश थ्री इंटू टू इंटू वन दट इज प्रोडक्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट एन नैचुरल नंबर्स हियर आई एम राइटिंग इट इन द डिसेंडिंग ऑर्डर ओके देन सेकेंड वन एन फैक्टोरियल कैन बी रिटर्न एज एन इंटू एन माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल और यू कैन राइट इट एज एन इंटू एन माइनस वन इंटू एन माइनस टू फैक्टोरियल लाइक वाइज कंटिन्यूस ओके देन थर्ड वन इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वैल्यू ऑफ जीरो फैक्टोरियल वैल्यू ऑफ द जीरो फैक्टोरियल इज इक्वल टू वन अवर नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज काउंटिंग प्रिंसिपल देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ काउंटिंग सारे सी फर्स्ट इन कंसिडरिंग मल्टीप्लीकेशन प्रिंसिपल let one event can occur in m different ways and followed by another event can occur in n different ways meaning of this one is see one event that may be any event there are m possibilities are there and for another event there are n possibilities are there and very important condition is first event and the second event are correlated okay one event is followed by the another event okay then total number of weights that means total number of weights possible for their occurrence is m into n okay we called it as multiplication principle okay if three events are there okay then one event can occur in m ways followed by another event can occur in n ways and one more event that can occur in p ways then total number of weights is equal to m into n into p okay it you can extend to so many events okay remember one event is there that can occur in m ways followed by another event is there that can occur in n ways then total number of occurrence is equal to m into n okay. or you can remember this one in very simple way that you can consider two events and that can occur in m and n ways then whenever m and n comes that means in the middle and comes then you have to do m into n okay it's a easy way to remember the multiplication principle for example see i'm considering two shirts s1 and s2 and here i'm considering two pants p1 p2 and consider one more pant that is p3 
Now combine the possible ways. You can see S1 and P1 and you can use S1 and P2 as well as you can use S1 and P3. It's a one possibility. If you are selecting S2, that means shirt 2, you can use S2 and P1 or you can shirt 2 and pant 2, that is S2 and P2. If you are using this one, you will get S2 and P3. Okay, now see 1, 2, 3, here also 3. Total 6 possible ways are there. You can use 6 different matchings. Here you can find 6 different matchings. Okay, but here only 2 and here 3 are given. If more numbers of objects are given, then it's difficult to list each of the possible ways. So that's why you, we are using multiplication principles. Here see one event that is selection of shirt. Take it as M that can occur in two ways. What's the second event that is selection of pants? That is N that can occur in three ways, right? Here see only two shirts. So possible ways is equal to two. Here only three pants, possible ways is equal to three. Here see you need to pair pant and shirt, right? So not selecting only shirt or only pant. You need to select both shirt and pant. Okay. See middle clearly and comes right. So here we need to use multiplication principle. One event that is M that can occur in two ways. Another event that is selection of pants that can occur in three ways. Total number of ways is equal to 2 into 3. It's equal to 6 ways. Count here. Here also you are getting 6 by using multiplication principle in one step you will get answer okay second one is the addition principle according to addition principle if one event can occur in m ways and another event can occur in n different ways and very important condition is occurrence of one does not affect the another one See, one event can occur in M different ways as well as another event that can occur in N different ways. And occurrence of one does not affect the another one. Then total number of ways is equal to M plus N. Okay, it's a very important condition. Okay, see in the previous multiplication principle, one event can occur in m different ways followed by that means first event is related to the second event but here see one e event can occur in m ways as well as another event can occur in n ways and that two events are not correlated okay see occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of another so in that case, total number of ways is equal to M plus N. Okay? Or simply you can remember it as whenever M or N comes. Okay? One event can occur in M ways or another event can occur in N ways. Then total number of ways is equal to M plus N. Okay? In the middle or condition comes. In that case, you need to take M plus N. Whenever AND condition comes, you need to take M into N. Next concept is permutations. See the definition of permutations. Permutation is nothing but arrangement of objects in a particular order. Okay, that's the meaning of permutation. Here very important is particular order. For example, see, I am considering one object, the second object and the third object, okay. 
see it's a one arrangement okay or you can arrange it as see two here and three here one here now see it's a one different of arrangement right or you can see three here two here and one here now see again you can observe different arrangement okay here see you are arranging the objects in a particular order here order is important okay that arrangements are called permutations for example see boy and one girl is there now see it's a one arrangement first boy then girl what's a possible arrangement what's another arrangement here girl and here boy now see first position girl and the second position boy now we can observe na these two arrangement are different from each other right see in the first position boy only here second position girl but here see first position girl only second position boy only so first one is different from the second one here you can see some particular order right this type of arrangements are called permutations okay permutation is nothing but arrangement of objects in a particular order here order is very important now we need to derive particular formula for permutations for that reason let n be the number of objects and r be the number of objects arranging in a order then it is denoted by npr okay npr here p represents the permutation okay clear see 10 objects are there from the 10 objects you need to arrange only four objects in that case you can write it as 10p4 that means meaning of this is arrangement of four objects from 10 objects here p represents arrangement of objects in a particular order then see suppose 3p2 is there what's the meaning of 3p2 then arrangement of two objects from three objects okay total three objects are there but from the three objects you are arranging two objects in a particular order okay for example see a b and c is there three objects are there now i am selecting only two objects from these three objects that may be a b it's a one arrangement then ba it's a another arrangement ab and ba are not equal here see first a then b here first b then a one order is there right then suppose i'm considering ac then you will get ca it's a another arrangement then see consider bc and cb okay here 1 2 3 4 5 6 arrangements you can see right see from the three objects you are arranging only two objects at a time okay in that case you can write it as three objects are there but you are arranging only two objects that is denoted by 3p2 we read it as 3p2 meaning of this is arrangement of two objects from the three objects okay but here see only three objects are there given and and you are arranging only two objects it's easy to calculate the number of arrangements but when more number of objects given and you need to select more number of objects that time it's difficult to list all the arrangements so to find the number of arrangements or to find the permutations we need to apply some particular formula okay now see the formula for calculating permutations let n be the number of objects and r be the number of objects arranging 
from n okay from the n objects you are selecting only r objects then npr is equal to arrangement of r objects from the n objects is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial okay it's a formula for npr okay where all the objects are distinct okay it's a very important condition all the objects are distinct okay suppose see a a b is there here not all the objects are distinct right here see a repeats two times okay that time this formula is not applicable different formula is there this formula is applicable only when all the objects are distinct that means each object is different from another one in that time arrangement of r objects from the n object is denoted by npr and the formula is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial or npr here i'll write the formula n factorial divided by n minus r factorial where 0 less than or equal to r r less than or equal to n okay maximum value for r is equal to n and minimum value for r is equal to 0 now see the note first one npn okay npn is equal to what's the formula npr n factorial divided by here see n minus in place of r n is there right n minus n factorial so we'll get n factorial divided by n minus n is 0 factorial n factorial divided by what's the value of 0 factorial 0 factorial value is 1 we saw that in factorial notation right so its value is equal to n factorial so n p n is equal to n factorial it's a very important formula okay what's the meaning of n p n that means arrangement of n objects from the n objects right that means arrangement of all objects at a time okay that is equal to n factorial then see the second note n p 0 is equal to apply the formula what you will get n factorial divided by n minus 0 factorial it's equal to n factorial by n minus 0 is n so you will get n factorial is equal to 1 therefore n p 0 value is equal to 1 okay remember the second formula np0 value is equal to 1 here see a b and c three objects are there you are not arranging any objects okay that means you are leaving the objects as they exist right okay you are not doing any arrangements a b c here three objects are there you are leaving the objects as they exist there's a only one possibility right okay suppose see three objects are inside a box 1 2 3 three objects you are not doing any arrangements okay that time see only one possibility is there right that means you are leaving the objects as they exist okay that means there exists only one possibility so np0 means no arrangement okay arrangement of zero objects from n objects that means you are not doing any arrangement if you are not doing any arrangement means you are leaving the elements as they exist there exists only one possibility so np0 value is equal to 1 so these are some basics about permutations just remember permutation means arrangement of objects in a particular order here order is very important and if n distinct objects are given and you are selecting r objects from n objects then it is denoted by npr and the formula is npr is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial condition is 0 less than or equal to r r less than or equal to n that means r value maximum equal to n and r value is minimum equal to 0 suppose see 6p7 here r value is greater than n value 
arrangement of seven objects from the six object given only six objects then is it possible to make arrangement for seven objects no right because only six object is there from the six object is not possible to make arrangement of seven objects so r value must be less than or equal to n either this r value equal to n or r value is less than n but r value is not greater than n okay then the second formula is np0 is equal to its a value is equal to 1 then third condition you need to remember it's a very important condition r value must be less than or equal to n that means either r is less than n or r is equal to n and r is not greater than n okay these are three very important formulas you need to remember